What reactions have been trailing this development in Nigerian Union of Petroleum and Natural Gas Workers and the Senior Staff Association that's Pengasan? Uh, they've actually come out in a statement that said IMF's advice to Nigerian government to remove subsidy, according to them, is poisonous. The statement of the IMF has created panic in the country with associated hoarding of petroleum products. Panic buying skyrocketed increases in prices of goods and services in the country. Meanwhile, the federal government through its ministry and minister of finance has given assurance that there are no plans to remove subsidy now, just as queues emerge in filling stations in some parts of the country. To look at this critically, I have an energy consultant who joins me now via Skype, Charles Majomi. Charles, it's great to have you join us on the show today. Charles, if you can hear me, let's start with the issue of subsidy. We have to understand that the subsidy is not something that was, I believe, intended as a permanent fixture. Subsidy should always accompany government plans to reinvest into the social welfare and infrastructure projects that would allow for greater productivity within the economy. As populations grow, such as is, as is happening in Nigeria, even at, at, the, at, at an alarming rate, the cake, the subsidy cake, will become increasingly small. And that small, that, that increasing division of subsidy with a growing population of people will at some point um, not be possible anymore. So I do, so in a nutshell, I agree with Christine Lagarde's comments. I also agree with the comments made by this government with respect to her comments that uh, uh, any, any alleviation of subsidy should be gradual and should be done in line with a very clear strategy for rerouting the, uh, the, the money saved from subsidy into, proje into projects that will invest in human uh, um, capacity, human welfare, and infrastructure. Indeed, Charles, just like you said, a lot needs to be put in place if we are to take off subsidy to cushion the effect. We have yet to put all of that in place. So how soon do you think that will work? Given the fact that only NNPC imports for now, I think this, the, the, the lapses should be checked since it's government's entity. Absolutely. I mean, I think since government is the one that is um, currently regulating the, uh, the importation of, of uh, petroleum products, and they are the ones who are saddled with the responsibility, if it happens, of reducing the subsidy, then I think we as the citizens have a right to demand at this stage that a very clear plan for divestment from this subsidy be put forward, okay? That again, um, uh, hits areas of capacity development, human welfare and human social welfare and the kind of infrastructure that will enable uh, greater industrialization in this country. I should say at this point, um, just going back to the issue of why subsidy must be removed and another solution found. Last year alone, we spent over 700 billion Naira on subsidy. Now, that figure is an abstraction unless you realize that our total spending on uh, on healthcare in this country was half of that figure. Our total spending on education in this country is 650 billion uh, naira. Ten of our top universities in this country, the budgets allocated to them does not come close to the 700 billion naira that we're spending today. So it is an imperative that we change direction. Um, the methodology for doing so, the method for doing so, must be very carefully orchestrated by government and by the unions who represent the interests of the labor unions who represent the interests of the people. And it must be done in an orderly way so as to avert uh, the kind of shock that a sudden release of uh, subsidy would uh, give to the people. Charles, again, this figure seems to be worrisome. For 2017, 46 million liters of fuel, that's all, almost on a daily basis. 54 million as of 2018, and now we are doing, we're talking about 56 million. Many have talked about this figure. 
are, are we really consuming such amount uh, when it comes to PMS on a daily basis? Well, I mean, look at the growth in our urban areas, specifically Lagos, where uh, the majority of this subsidy is applied. Yes, definitely there is a, an exponential growth that comes from urban migration, more people owning uh, uh, vehicles, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the, uh, the need for um, fuel to, uh, 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 to generate power in this country and the failings of PHCN, definitely it's there. But I think also the opaque nature of the crude for product swap is something that needs the attention, that needs attention. Certainly the opaque nature presents the opportunity for corrupt enrichment. And so I think while we can speculate on whether those figures are correct or not, it will be more productive for us to start looking at solutions beyond a subsidy. All right, almost finally now, now Charles, Let's look at the differentials now. We know that. Let's look at the differentials now. We know that when price of crude is on the high side, which is good for oil producing nations like Nigeria, the landing cost of petroleum products also goes to the high side. And that is where the marketers uh, and also the, those moving out as the, in charge of moving products now start having problems. What do you, what do you make of this? Uh, I think eventually at the end of the day, Local refinery or local refining will be the solution to this problem. Absolutely. I mean, let's keep in mind a very essential fact. People always talk about us being uh, an economy that benefits greatly from the um, from the uh, the from high oil prices. But you must also realize that yes, we benefit from higher oil prices, but the price of our subsidy also increases almost in equal measure. So a lot of the opportunities that we have from high prices of crude oil are eaten up by a, an increasingly bloated um, obligation that we have to uh, subsidizing our, our products. A deregulated market, okay, such as exists in Ghana, can exist here. Um, as a deregulated market will increase uh, 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 will stabilize the, la the labor market by enabling employment and creating th uh, that, that, uh, that the new refineries coming on stream will create, um, both in the refineries and in the oil retailing space. And it will allow for marketers to address the real needs of this, uh, the real supply needs of the industry rather than looking to NNPC as a regulator to, to tell them how much to import at any given time. So whether we, uh, so the answer to that is that, yes, a free and deregulated downstream is really the only solution in my view to a transparent um, uh, and practical, and, and practical uh, 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 val uh, uh, downstream in this country. Well, many have talked about deregulation on a very final note now. But um, some also say that marketers could take advantage of Nigerians. Uh, in your thoughts, on your words, when do you think marketers can be so active in the petroleum market? How soon can they get back into this market? Well, you know, when you, when you uh, remove the subsidy, there are also dangers. Um, there is danger that comes from uh, monopolies in the downstream through uh, market monopolies that could distort the, um, the appearance, the, the, the pricing, uh, uh, the, the transparency with respect to pricing. I think in tandem with deregulation, the government must play a kind of um, uh, 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 protective role. PPRA is there to define a template, in my view, for what uh, the prices should be in a deregulated market as an indicative um, template to protect retailers, to protect uh, those uh, people who buy from the marketers from the kind of market distortions that monopoly can cause. But if, but as has been again, as has been seen in Ghana and in other places, a deregulated market is really the only way to go and to achieve this in an orderly way that allows us to um, prevent the uh, appearance of monopolies um, and to promote uh, investments into private refineries that can have positive impact on our local economy through 
increase labor um, and, uh, and, and, uh, and, and a more robust downstream. Charles Majomi, thank you very much for your time. Charles Majomi is an energy consultant speaking extensively on issues surrounding subsidy and fuel scarcity, which has been...